Okay, so we're here with uh, Mr. Ionides today to um, talk about cataracts. Um, so I want to begin by thanking you for uh, agreeing Thank you. to do yep. this. Lovely. And um, yeah, so we'll just jump straight into it. So, can you tell us, are all cataracts the same? No, they're not all the same. From my point of view, when operating on them, every cataract is very different, but I'm peculiar in that way. For the point of view of undergraduate teaching, there are three kinds of adult cataracts, and those are the nuclear cataracts, where it's a central part of the cataract that gradually and slowly becomes more cloudy, uh, and that can be caused classically by smoking. And then there are the cortical cataracts, which are like the spokes of a wheel, uh, they're more commonly seen in diabetics and then there are posterior subcapsular cataracts where the opacity is all at the back of the lens and that's more commonly seen in steroids or trauma but often it's usually a mix-up of those kind of three kinds okay. pediatric cataracts are very different and that can depend on uh, the familial inheritance of autosomal dominant cataracts but they're rare so I won't say any more about those fine, fine. okay so how do I identify a cataract? As a non-ophthalmologist, someone comes to me complaining about, um, about their vision, how yeah. do I know that it's a cataract? First of all, on the story they give, a gradual, slowly misty fogginess of the vision, uh, a cataract is a waterfall, and sometimes the vision just can be, well, rarely bubbly. It really shouldn't be called a waterfall at all. It should be called a, a foggy cloudiness. Um, but it just makes the vision gradually, slowly become more foggy and more cloudy. Sometimes people can become more short-sighted, and if they're in their 70s or 80s and they've lost their near vision, having a cataract and becoming a little bit short-sighted can be quite useful for them because they can start to read again without glasses for the first time in 20 years. Uh, so you get it on the story and if you were to look in their eyes, if you were to have a direct ophthalmoscope, uh, which we ophthalmologists call the guess ophthalmoscope because it's completely useless, um, you would shine the eye, shine the light into the eye and when you get the red reflex you'll see a silhouette of little frosted black lacy shadows and that would be the sign of a cataract. So you'd know they had a cataract. Whether that was the only cause of their poor vision, you'd want to look at the retina and exclude any other causes. Yeah. Um, and then we could look on the slip lamp and see the cataract in more detail. Yeah. Okay, okay. And so what's the mechanism of the development of the cataract over time so in terms of sort of physiology? Right, and so literally molecular level. Yeah. Okay, well to be transparent, anything needs a regular and rigid molecular array. So glass, is transparent, not because of a regular molecular layer, but because of the atoms of the glass are very carefully aligned, like soldiers on parade. Mm. Um, in the cornea, the reason why the cornea is clear is because the regular array of the collagen molecules. And in the lens, the reason why it's clear is because of the regular array of the crystalline proteins within the lens cells. And when those start to become more irregular with time and water vacuoles start to displace the molecules, then light can't pass clearly through but gets deflected and it creates an opacity which is the cataract. Okay, okay. So does anything increase the chance of developing a cataract? Genetics. If your mother, father, brother, sisters, uncle, aunts have got cataract, you're more likely to get it. Okay. Whether it uh, trauma, damage, previous surgery and some drugs like steroids can cause cataracts. Uh, but really it's genetics okay. and people like to say that they're more common in parts of the world that are sunny so if you're from Africa or India people say you're more likely to get cataracts but carry that logic around the rest of the world and we don't find that Central, uh, Central Americans or the southern states of the US or the Australians have a higher incidence of cataracts and um, if people from Africa or India come to rare sunny day if they come to London they still develop their cataracts earlier because more of a, of a genetic um, background than any other causes of them. There are some papers suggesting that UV light can contribute to cataract and the jury's out. There's been no proof of that. Right. So wearing sunglasses will protect against skin cancers and mm, but won't really show to, to be protective against, against, uh, against cataracts. Okay. There is one study looking at airline pilots but that's inconclusive as to whether they develop cataracts or not. So when you're looking at doing the uh, cataract operation on yep. someone, how bad does the vision have to get in terms of visual acuity before you will usually offer this to people? Well, it's up to them. From our point of view as clinicians, if the cataract is starting to cause problems, we'll get on and do the surgery, understanding the limitations of the lens implants that we'll put in. You don't want to swap good vision for worse vision. Mm. Uh, but on the, whole, on the whole, yeah, if they're getting problems with their vision, then we'll operate. So sometimes you can get people that have got 6'9 cataracts. And if it's 6'9, they're still able to drive but if they're getting a lot of glare if they're finding they can't carry out their daily functions then we'll get on and do their cataracts at the same time you can sometimes get people who come in with 
636 cataracts, which is very limited in the vision. Yeah. And you ask them if they're having any problem with that vision, and they say, no, nope, not having any problems at all, in which case, don't touch yeah. them, leave them alone. The primary care trusts and the politicians try to interfere and put restrictions on how bad the visual acuity has to be before operating on cataracts, mm. but on the whole, even they will not stand in the way of clinicians if we say their vision's being affected and our daily life's being affected, they're not going to prevent us doing the cataract surgery yeah. or funding it. Yeah. Okay. And um, in terms of the uh, lenses that are put in, what can these uh, different lenses yeah. do for the patients? Usually we put in monofocal lenses, so they're plastic lenses, they're made of acrylic, and they are plastic lenses that don't focus for near and distance. Mm. So we tend to put lenses in that will give people good distance vision, and then they just need ready readers from the supermarket or from the optician to get them reading again. Yeah. Uh, because people are getting younger and younger as cataract surgery improves and the outcomes are getting better, they don't want to have reading glasses for near. And if you've got implants in both eyes that give you good distance vision, you can't see anything close up. You need reading glasses to eat with, mm. and that's no good. So the manufacturers have tried to etch reading ads onto distant lenses. But the moment you get the lens focusing in more than one direction, you start to increase visual confusion and you get more, you get a degradation to the quality of your vision. So we're still trying to find the, the best way of getting a, a focusing or accommodating lens. Okay. okay. So in terms of uh, future developments with cataract surgery yeah. treatments, what can we expect in the next few decades? Well, as with all uh, operations or treatments, it's largely industry driven. Mm. So it's, it's driven by the big companies that make all the equipment for ophthalmology and they m are making more lasers to make the whole process less uh, surgeon directed and more automated to remove error and as, whilst, as long as any operation has a risk it's not perfected so we're still trying to perfect it by getting more lasers to do the surgery and also to improve the quality of the implant that we put in people's eyes it would be nice to try to prevent cataracts altogether but there are distraught despite various antioxidant drops and things being advertised on the internet there's nothing that will prevent the cataracts altogether okay Bye-bye. See you later.